How you doing, everybody? Tim from Ski Rex Media. Back at you again with our second episode post-COVID. That's right. I am not going to let a single person forget that I was sick with COVID. Give me your sympathy. (laughs) All right. Enough silliness. Welcome once again to the Ski Rex Media Podcast, everybody. Thank you for joining me. Um, we're, we have a, we have an interview this week. We have an interview this week. Um, we're going to talk about street style and we're going to talk about skiing and we're going to talk about mountain style. We got some style and we got some skiing and we'll get into that as we get into the interview. But first, 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 please do not forget to subscribe and or follow and or whatever word that is used in the way that you uh, enjoy the podcast. If you watch the video versions on YouTube or Rumble, I do believe it's subscribe on both, right? Click those subscribe. That way you'll always know when new episodes arrive that way or are published that way. Also, um, in your favorite podcasting app for the audio only version, um, whether it be Spotify, whether it be Apple Podcasts, whether it be iHeartRadio or Pandora or Stitcher or any one of the many many podcast apps in which the ski rex media podcast available please do not forget to click the heart or the subscribe or the follow they all they're not all totally different but each one might be a little different check the one that your favorite podcast uh, app uses and then subscribe and again with the audio version you'll always know when a brand new episode is out and these are the first this is the second of two the second post covid um post covid episode it was three three weeks ish so maybe actually even maybe four episodes worth of uh or four weeks worth of no episode new episodes because i was sick and had to cancel interviews and do all kinds of stuff so interviews may not happen every week um until i get everything rolling here again at ski rex media and ski rex media hq but this week we do have an interview we talked to margaret from trapper of colorado she is in Colorado. She skis in Colorado, has skied in the East. So we talk a whole bunch about skiing, but we also talk about clothing, gear, style. Now, when we usually talk about gear, we talk about your tech gear, the jackets, the pants, the hats, the helmets, the the poles, the boots, the whatnot. But what about looking decent (laughs) <laughs> and wearing something cool on the mountain so you look cool even when you go say when you're done skiing or riding for the day with your snowboards and your skis and you go down to the opera bar and you want to look good you know you want to look nice this is how you do it this is where you can get some gear so you look at that you can see margaret's style is a it, it's a mix she did she talks about it being a mix you know she knows the east coast city style like you know, I'm from the East Coast. I don't live in any of the cities, but you know what I mean. We all, we've all been to New York and seen style and whatnot and things like this, right? So she knows a little bit about that. She's taking it out there. She's starting her, her own line, and we talked to her about that, um, as well as skiing and snow in Colorado and all kinds of stuff. It, it gets really cool. We actually did talk about her car, and we forgot to swing back around because she has such a great ski bum vehicle um, <laughs> that I love it. We never come back around to it, which kind of sucks. And we talk ski, ski vehicles here on skierxmedia.com sometimes. But after we were done recording, we both realized we forgot about that and that it would have been awesome to come back around to it. Um, but for now, let's get into the interview. This one's going to be a little different um, for you video version people because it is a phone and she's not going to be on screen herself. Um, but I got a little something there. So you, there is something for your eyeballs. That's not just me. And, um, and you'll know everything will be working out and it'll be good. So no, you will not see another person, but you will hear her voice. And that's all we really need um, for, for the interview. Right, right. And then for you audio version people, it, that's what it is anyway. <laughs> All right. So anyway, here's Margaret Trapper of Colorado and me. We talk about all that stuff and I will see you at the end. Enjoy it. So as the Ski Rex Media podcast continues once again, now that I've uh, uh, obviously I have recovered 
from the wonders of COVID-19. It is real, everybody. Every conspiracy theorist out there who said it wasn't real, it's real. And I know that now. So that's on me. But we're not here to talk about that. We're here to talk about gear. Yes, for you video version people. And I'm sure I'll put a picture of it up on social media for those of you who uh, listen to the audio version in the various places. Um, I have this wonderful, cool scarf, kind of bluish, grayish. Very cool, right? It's also very warm. I'm going to have to take it off because it's getting warm in here. Um, Very cool. You need threads. You don't just need your gear, your skis, your pants, your jackets and coats and things like this. You need threads. You need to be cool. You need to be stylish. You need to look like you're, you need to at least look the part. So we're going to talk about that today with someone who knows all about that and she skis. So it works, right? Right. Miss Margaret, how are you today? Hey, Tim. Good to hear your voice. (laughs) Yeah. Now she's via phone. So anybody who's watching the video version, you see she's not there. There's something else there where she would normally be. It's a phone call. Don't worry. Your stuff's not broken. Everything's all right. You can hear her, and that's the, and that's the point. Uh, Ms. Margaret, tell them what, who you are and what you do, why you're here today. Hey, okay. So um, my name's Margaret. I'm an independent designer, and I'm the founder and creative director of Trapper of Colorado. And this is my mountain-inspired accessories and clothing brand that I started after moving to Denver from New York City about seven and a half years ago. Um, Trapper of Colorado is intended to celebrate Colorado Western heritage, and that includes skiing and apres ski culture. Awesome. Very good. And we we love the apres ski here. We do. Everybody does. Everybody who's listening does. <laughs> they love it. Um, some of them earn it. Some of them just go straight to the bar. But that's all right. You know, do what you got to do. <laughs> skiing, exactly. T-Rex media pushes. Skiing, snow sports are for everyone. You do it the way you want to. Don't worry about someone calling you a poser. I've been called one. Everybody knows it. I love it. Um, so you start this You start this company, start this brand. Why, why get into it? Why do it? What brought you to wanting to do this? Okay, so um, I'll make it try to be the Cliff Notes version, and that is that um, <laughs> I moved out, and I didn't move out to Colorado thinking I'm going to start this brand I was just here and I was like you know when I'm going to Colorado I'm coming from New York City New York City is very fashionable and I was like well I'm not going to wear my New York City fashions out there so what's it going to be like when I get there and I expected to find a sense of style that would be unique to the region um it didn't feel coastal and I found a ton of sports gear and obviously we all need sports gear, <laughs> but, sure. but I also yeah. found that style. It was like New York or LA. And since Colorado is becoming packed with people from these coasts, we're, um, we're sort of letting our heritage slip a little bit. And I felt like, well, what can I do that connects us to our sense of history, to our sense of the mountains, um, to our sense of culture in the West. And so I just, started kind of riffing on that and was like okay natural sure. fibers not technical gear i use wool i use silk satin i use organic cotton and um i make everything in the u.s i make things in colorado as much as i can it's not always easy um but i try to and other things i make in the garment district in new york and in la but mostly it's it's here and um Oh, and also, before I forget, I'm giving a special discount to your listeners for the Ski Rex podcast listeners, and it's going to run through April of this year, 2022, and they can get 10% discount on anything on the website if they use the code SKIREX10 um, at the checkout. So I just wanted to throw that out there. And, um, nice. and I'm sending it through April. Yeah, well, of course. And I'm sending it through April because... Yeah. I've been doing t-shirts for a while with vintage ski photos on them, which um, is just really inspired because I love the vintage ski photos. And I was like, you know, this would be cool on a t-shirt. And so I started doing those and I'm going to um, do some different versions and I might not really have them on the website till April. So I thought if your, your peeps want the discount, they can have it through April. Awesome. Oh, they'll appreciate it. Believe me. They, uh, they, 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 they know how to, they, they know what to do. You guys know. You've bought my merch. Head mm. over to Trapper of Colorado at trapperofcolorado.com. Is that correct? Yes, that is correct. There you go. Yes. And then Ski yeah. Rex 10, Ski Rex 10, 10% off. Get yeah. yourself some threads. So that's and very Ski Rex cool. And Ski Rex in all caps. 
All caps. This key, all caps too. Go to the descriptions. Right. You'll see it once again for the audio people who are listening in the car. Don't look now. Wait till you get out of the car. You don't want the, the <laughs> cell phone ticket in your car. I've gotten it. It's a, over a hundred bucks. It sucks. Um, <laughs> Oh, oh it's so expensive. It's so expensive. I mean, I get, but Margaret's in Colorado. We've heard that the traffic there is infamous going up I-70. You might be in a giant parking lot anyway. <laughs> she knows. Oh, yeah. Like, that's what we've heard. <laughs> we've heard that if nothing else, I-70 will be the worst traffic you've ever seen. And we're from the east. So. Yeah, right. Right. <laughs> the way you're, you, you see traffic there, for sure. Well, it's not. It depends on the day. You know, it's like there are times when. Like, I ski during the week. I really rarely ski on the weekends, and, and it can be just no problem at all. Like, you just cruise on up during the week. And um, and I also, like, I think one of the best-kept secrets here is that you can ski late. You know, there'll be storms coming in in April, and I think some of the best yeah. skiing comes late in the season, and the mountains will stay open and until, some, well, Arapaho Basin, you can be skiing sometimes until July. I've skied on the first day of summer just a couple of years ago, 2019, um, we had a storm on the first day of summer. I was up there and it yep. was skiing. It was really good, you know. So um, if you can, like, you know, take the gamble and buy a, a plane ticket in late April, you can have some of the best skiing, you know, as, as the mountains are just fixing to close down. But um, but you also could, you know, <laughs> could not work out in your favor. You never know. So, so if you do that, true? though, you're not going to. The traffic won't be there. The people won't be there. It'll be just Colorado locals. So. That, which could be a lot of fun for everyone. Um, you know, if yeah. you could head out. Every, it's like we say here. I forget who said it to me, but skiing really is, you know, people refer to it as a winter sport, but it isn't. It starts in the fall and ends in the spring. And, you mm -hmm. know, nowadays you can go in the summer, especially if you want to hike up to the high mountains. You can go in the summer, even in the United States. Um, you don't have to go to you know the southern hemisphere. Um, so sure. mm, excuse me. Traffic aside from Colorado, yeah. Now you've been there, but you've now mentioned you've gone. You're you're you went from to the Rockies from the east, correct? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Awesome. So I'm an East Coast girl, um, and I was living in New York City, working in the film industry and the advertising industry for quite a few years and I love to ski, but I rarely got out because, you know, it's like, okay, I live in the so apartment the size of a closet in Brooklyn. I'm like, where am I going to put my gear? And so sure. I skied a few times with friends and I skied up in, um, La Hudson Valley and at Wyndham I skied in Vermont at, um, at Smuggler's Notch. And actually I have, uh, okay. Sure. Good friends from Jeffersonville. So I want to give a little shout out to Patty nice. Lars, Fiona and Flynn, although Flynn's in Colorado now, and say, hey, mm -hmm. because I went to stay with them and um and uh skied smugs and loved it. And then um I skied Mountain Creek in New Jersey. <laughs> like that's okay. Like, and, you know, that's like a totally different kind of skiing i think but it was fun and um but mostly i never skied in new york and i just uh wouldn't even think about it you know you didn't have a car it's like you just go with people who are really into it if you're lucky and whatever so um so i didn't really do that and what um you know i came to colorado really because i just needed a change you know people in new york sure. like love it still love it but after a while you're like i just got it with somewhere else and so i just found a way to get here took the leap i'd never even been to colorado um only place i'd ski in the west was park city and when i went to sundance festival because i was working on a movie that got into it um mm -hmm. and then it was just like well this could be really exciting it's totally different it's the mountains and um you know it was like why not so i just came to Colorado and um you know that's that's what brought me here <laughs> really. nice no that's awesome man I any time sometimes people need a change of venue sometimes people are just ski bums and they head to Colorado or Utah or Tahoe or wherever it might be um sometimes right. people do whatever but the fact that you did the fact that you're here, like this is what's going to now draw people into this episode <laughs> is what you're, gonna, you're now hooking everybody because the majority of my fandom, though, we do have fans across the world. 
around the world, yeah. all over the place. Yeah. But yeah. <laughs> the oldest fans, the original fans are Mid-Atlantic, the PA contingent, and this group, and you're part of it. And that's mm -hmm. awesome. That's hometown for us. Um, like you said, you went to Mountain Creek. You've been into the Poconos. You've been into upstate uh, New York and all the way up here. Yeah. Like, I mean, when I was growing up, I grew up outside of Washington, D.C. and Maryland. And I mean, it was started in seventh grade and my family didn't ski. And I just started going on these like Saturday ski trips. And I just did it as much as I could. And I feel like I skied like everywhere. It was like Virginia, Maryland, PA. So, I mean, I think I, I loved skiing like Wisp, Round Top, Bryce in Virginia, Wintergreen in Virginia. Sure. And then in the Poconos, Jack Frost, I think, was my favorite. And then yep. um, it was like Seven Springs was really cool, Camelback, all of these places. And it's like you don't even realize – how many mountains are to ski in the mid-atlantic like it's not they're not huge like they are out here but they are fun sure. it was great you know and and on really windy cold days here and sometimes in march it can be really windy here and i'm like on some icy mountain you know icy run with friends of mine who are from the west and they're like oh it's too icy and i'm like no 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 like you just gotta use yep. your edges like this is what we did back east it's not a big deal yep. <laughs> if you could if you could ski the ice coast you could ski anywhere that's 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 kind of a try hardy thing to say i know but i push it because i think it's funny um that's it's on true. me it's so true now, oh and I was also going to say, like, when I was learning to ski, and I mean, my parents were very supportive. I was really lucky about that. But I sure. convinced my mother to let me take lessons at an indoor ski school in Virginia outside of D.C. I think I must have been in eighth grade or something, but I would go in the fall and do those little runs down these little hills at an indoor ski school. And I thought it was a great way to like get your skills up when the season is shorter, you know, in the East. So yeah. I, I really am now, all about it. It's like whatever you can do to get, get your, your ski skills up, just do it. Now let's talk about that for a second, because that's interesting. Now you never ask a lady your age. We're chivalrous here <laughs> at Ski Rex Media. I am, but yeah, you are, <laughs> we know that for indoor, the way we know it, Big snow was the first American indoor thing. They've had these all over Europe and Asia for years. We're just getting into it as Americans. We've all we uh we all know that um uh John Emery from Alpine X was talking about Fairfax Peak and that's gonna open in a couple of years. What was your indoor experience back then? You know, I just I remember it like it's like if I say much about it, it's gonna seem like it's not worth doing. <laughs> because I do no, remember totally. it being like like some kind of like AstroTurf and little pellets or something like yeah. that. It wasn't, I don't think it was very elaborate at all. You know, I just remember that I did it and yeah. it was enough to give me the confidence to start my season. And sure. I, I can't say that I know much about it because I know that when I went, like I just went by myself. I mean, I was with other people in the class, but it wasn't like any of my yeah. friends were in it with me. So it's like, it's not like I have these great memories of indoor ski school. It was just something I, went through well the, it, it's very interesting from a history standpoint because we get to know certain things by certain names and you know what have you big snow american dream down there in new jersey um will go down in history as the first american indoor place to open great fair pack fairfax peak will be number two um Where's that? great Where's i don't know fairfax peak where is it so Fairfax Peak will be built in just outside or just on the edge of Lorton, Virginia, near I-95 oh, on Fairfax. top of an old landfill like, there. I did not. Re oh, my gosh. I had no idea. That's like, well, Fairfax. Yeah, that makes sense. I had yeah. no idea. It's going to it's like we again. Well, uh, Margaret's also a fan of the program. She's listened to this and you listen to the episode with John Emery from Alpine X and he talks all about it. And that place is going to be styling. It's going to be sick. And he's. They're opening more across the country as they can. I actually tried to put it in his head like Las Vegas, baby, we can do this. But because I always I don't really need an excuse to go to Las Vegas. I'll go there any day of the week. But um, my <laughs> second home. But the point is, the point was 
this is more like a plastic hillier experience and we know those still there's um like a place in virginia i can't remember the name of that has outdoor plastic hill there's a place in connecticut that has outdoor plastic hill if you've seen copen hill in denmark on top of their big power plant it's plastic hill yeah. um it's like astroturf it's that kind of stuff yeah. that's very interesting because even though it's around i've never tried it and i don't know anybody who really has and that's cool that you got to do it back in the day i think <laughs> <laughs> it's cool enough <laughs> it's cool enough it's, it's cool different enough. Yeah. <laughs> um well some people talk yeah. tra trash about that like real try hardy people who will call you a poser will be like dude that's nothing that's not real i would never do that i'm like are you kidding me it's different i'll do it now i'll do it right now today where is it right, i'll do grass right. skiing i don't care well it is it's like you know there are certain muscles that you have to keep toned and there's certain skill sets for skiing. It's like, you know, why would you want to just atrophy when you have the opportunity? Cause it's not like, like there was a couple of summers ago, I was going to um, go down and ski in Argentina. Cause I love Argentina. And I was like, I'm sure. going to do it. I'm going to go. And, and then I got really sick and this was like pre COVID days. I just got some kind of summer cold and I was like, I'm not going anywhere. And so I didn't go. And it's like, yeah, well, <laughs> Like you can't just get on planes and go to Argentina or Chile or something, you know, whatever. So, yeah. or, or New Zealand. So it, it's like, all right, what, what can you do? And you want to stay in shape if you really love skiing. And so do it indoors, just do it, you know, yeah. it's fine. <laughs> That's what I say. And I fully promote indoor. I love indoor. I really enjoyed it. Yeah. It's simple. It's limited, but I had fun and that's what it's about. Fun. Don't let anybody tell you any right. different. It's about the fun. Don't let the tryhards get you. Ski Rex Media, enemy to the tryhard and lover of the poser. Because <laughs> um, I've been called a poser. And it's whatever. I don't care. I, well, can I tell you? So, I mean, I feel like, so I By came out here and to do, um, you know, and I started doing this. Uh, what I really wanted, what, what motivated me to do my company was, okay, so there's like a style that's Colorado, but what I really wanted was a trapper hat. And those are like, some people call them aviator hats, so they come with the ear flaps. And I wanted one that looked really much dressier that I could wear to the office, I could wear out to whatever, the theater, the brewery, anything without, um, you know, staying warm, especially because um, I ride a bike a lot, even though I should have been wearing a helmet, but sometimes it's so cold, you just want to wear a hat. And so I was like, I just need this kind of hat. And I couldn't find anything like it. And I started just thinking, well, how hard can it be to have it made? Well, it's harder than anything. But anyway, or have it done totally. the right way. But um, totally. so I started getting these fibers and I got, is there wool on the outside, like herringbone and wool and wool and cashmere. And then they have a layer of quilt batting. And then on the inside next to your head is silk satin. And they're really quite, stunning you know they're attractive and when i was so excited i was first getting my prototypes made and i was showing people here and some someone said to me you know well you're not going to wear that to hike a 14er and i'm like you know, like no like that's not the point you know this is for a really cool mountain look that's street style and at the yeah. same time like this person was from colorado and i think that like ugh, you're not from Colorado, like you're just a poser. And I'm thinking, you're right. <laughs> like maybe I, I am a poser. I'm definitely not from Colorado Only. originally. But, but I also was like, you know what? Like maybe it takes coming into a place to see what the place really has and then reflect totally. it back out. And that's what like my goal has been. Like just to, I'm also really into like finding the heritage and actually – I want to tell you one thing, um, since I mentioned sure. that they have these satin linings, I do um, make a point of using more traditional Chinese silk patterns in the mm -hmm. linings of the Traber hats, because I found out that in the 1800s, the largest importer of the North American fur pelts was China. And so okay. they're trapper hats, like, you know, indicative. I mean, I don't use fur. I use faux fur on the brims, but it's, you know, it's, it's channeling the heritage of the, the mountain trappers. And so um, that brought the Chinese silk into North America was that trade in the 1800s. And that's why I sure. was like, you know, to honor the heritage, I'm putting traditional Chinese silk patterns rather than like I could do contemporary patterns. I could do Indian silk dupiani i could do italian silk but i'm doing this 
special calling just to honor the heritage of the region of the West. Nice. That's awesome. Cool. There's nothing wrong with that. That's great. That's fantastic. And I'm, I'm sure we look good doing it. Like I said, I have a Trapper of Colorado scarf that I was wearing, but it does get warm <laughs> under this light because I'm behind the times with lighting. And uh, it, it, it's very awesome. It's well made. It, it, it looks fantastic. Like, I love the colors of it. I love the construction of it. It's going to be Thank great you. to use around. Um, and again, you, you say this isn't tech gear. Like you said, you're not, you know, someone points out, dude, that trapper is not going to be great for doing this. And like, well, that's not the point. However, I would, I'd wear this while I was out on the hill. Why not, dude? You like, know, I, well, yeah. I will tell you, I wear mine like yours, the one that you have. First of all, sure. I made that by hand. That, that scarf oh, that you have, I made that by hand. That I didn't, I didn't know. weave it. I didn't weave it. I didn't weave uh -huh. the, the wool. I, I import the wool from Japan and then I do the whole process with, cutting it with fringing it often I was fringing my scarves sitting in the passenger seat on the way up to ski just literally like fringing scarves nice. and then I wash it in an eco-friendly wash and I sometimes wash it several times and it really softens the wool up that I yeah, wear totally. mine skin too because they breathe but they're warm but they have the breathability and I think they're perfectly fine for skiing you know and then like it isn't a tech gear thing and it, you're using a natural fiber. It's not going to be a plastic that ultimately can't break down. You know, it's a wool. Sure. So that's, that's the idea. It's like, why do we have to stray so far into plastics just to stay warm? We don't. Yeah, no, not at all. This is very cool. I love it. Um, I, I had no idea you actually put some, I'm not saying you're not a worker. What I'm saying is I didn't realize the process. <laughs> Oh you know? yeah. Well, why would you, why would you, you know, <laughs> that's true. Yeah, like I, I put in a lot of, go ahead. No, no, go on. It's okay. I was going to say, I put in a lot of time in retail and logistics. A lot of people know that how this stuff is made. I don't know nothing. Don't ask. I don't know. <laughs> I just know how to sell it to you. That's all I know how to do. Um, but it's great. And it, it does look fantastic too. So if you're looking to look good while you're hitting the bars afterwards, man, Trapper of Colorado. Well, thank you. That's it. Like, that's it. It's the vibe of the mountain towns. Like, you can go and you can bring, you know, your gear and then you can bring our stuff and you put it on when you're going out to the, the distillery or the brewery after you've been on the slopes and you can still look really mountainy and not, yeah. um, not be like wearing your ski helmet, you know, like, and stay warm and, and have the scarf. And actually, what I'm about to do for next winter are some mittens. Not nice. ski gear mittens, but fun mittens and other things like that. So, um, so yeah, I just like the idea of like the whole style, but um, sure. but at the same time, like you can easily wear that scarf while you're on the chairlift and skiing, and you know, stay warm, and then you don't have to have um, something that's not going to break down in the landfill let's just say <laughs> so. yeah and that's great that is cool and the thing about it here's what's interesting now some people would say tim why would you have just a a, a basically a, a, a clothing proprietor on your you know not not, not exactly the word right. i'm looking for but you are the proprietor of designer. your company a designer why would you do that well because some people would say and you hear about this all the time. You know, people, do they go to the mountain, they buy the sweatshirt, they're in the bar, they didn't ski a day, didn't do any of that, whatever. They're posers. You're not. You're legit. You do, you derive style from uh, uh, an area, culture maybe. I don't know if culture is quite the right word to use there, but you, you, you took style that you saw and the sports that you participate in. So you're not a poser. This is someone who legitimately does this, who's now taking you from first chair to last call. Like, is that accurate to say? Yes, thank you. I love that. Thank you so much. That's really nice to hear. I mean, I, um, yeah, I mean, I felt like this was something that I wanted in my life as a sure. skier out here. And, and also, like, I did spend a long time in New York City, and so... Sure. I've worn my stuff, of course. I've been back in New York in the winter and um, and dead cold, like dead cold. cold, so much colder in the east than it is in Colorado. I mean, you just don't feel mm -hmm. the cold here as much because it's so dry. And I've worn sure. my products and felt just as stylish with a mountain style 
on the street in New York and was super warm the whole way. You know, yeah. it's just there's so, yeah, I mean, I felt like, well, I don't want a T-shirt with the letter C on it like everybody comes to Colorado and it's something to bring home or, you know. The, and, and of course, I have the stickers all over the back of my car, but, but I'm from all the mountains. But it's, it's not, you know, yeah, like I totally have to. I drive a vintage car. It's a collector vehicle now. It became official with the plates and everything. And it's um, it's got wow. stickers all over it. So it's kind of fun. But it's, um, but I didn't, you know, I didn't just want that. I wanted something that really felt like the culture. And I was like, I think other people would too. And actually, you know, one of my biggest honors of the last year, and, and I haven't been in business very long at all. I, I launched right before sure. COVID. It was such a bad timing. But um, but I was doing a bunch of these holiday markets last month. And one of my customers on the very last day of the holiday markets was Senator Michael Bennett from Colorado. And he and his daughter were doing nice. their holiday shopping. And it was so much fun. I mean, I love Senator Bennett. And we did not talk politics. <laughs> we talked about <laughs> nice. history. We talked about Colorado history. And he recommended a book to me. I mean, it was really cool stuff. And um, But he bought a whole bunch of things. And it was partially because he saw what I was doing, which was trying to bring style to this region. And I, oh, that sounded so arrogant. I didn't mean it to be. It was like trying to... <laughs> channel the style it's of cool. this region channel sure. the style like it's like i didn't bring it but i was definitely feeling like we needed to pick up on it and reinforce it as what is woven into the culture here and our heritage so you know Absolutely. he saw it and i was like yay senator bennett all right <laughs> so anyway that was that was very um exciting uh for me. <laughs> I, I can imagine. I mean, look, in the United States, we, I mean, for better or for worse, this country, you know, loves to get political and poli politicians have rock star status for fame, whether it's good or bad, infamous, famous or not. It's, it's rock right. star style. I could get, I could get getting a kick out of that. If, if Bernie kept walked up to me and started saying, Hey, oh, speak yeah. media, blah, blah, blah. I'd be like, you know what, bro, I would never vote for you ever in life, but awesome. You know, and he'd be like, wait, what? <laughs> Trust me, everybody wished that he was wearing their mittens when it was like meme last oh. winter. That was, like, and it was a woman yep. from Vermont whose mittens. He, but yep. everyone's like oh, the mittens. <laughs> like, yep. like, she's so lucky. You know, I'm sure she's all oh, out. Yeah. In no time. <laughs> that was that was the greatest accidental marketing. Exactly. Just the greatest accidental marketing campaign in history. I thought it was the funniest thing ever. I, I respected that woman. I was like, go you. You win. Yes. Yeah. I'm yeah. sure. Yes. Like, well, actually, I said it. If that would have all gone down prior to the election, Bernie Sanders might be your president. Just saying, if that had gone down prior, because he got more attention for that than anything. I know, I know, right? Like, <laughs> yeah, it was, it was fun. Like, it was fun. Oh, totally. It's still, it's the gift that keeps on giving because it's like every now and then I still run across a meme from that, and I'm like, that is so yep. funny. And, you know, you follow me on Instagram, so you see like my sure. Instagram account yeah. is the the posts are like serious pretty serious stuff and like pictures of my products but the stories are just like i'm always cracking jokes and it's like business in the front party in the back because oh, totally. that is where i will try to post funny stuff or just interesting or inspirational stuff but not inspirational like cutesy but just like fun um every day if i can and so it's like sometimes i'm like there's a bernie meme i still want to post <laughs> you know because <laughs> they're still so good <laughs> It's true. Trapper of Colorado on Instagram uh, definitely got some meme action going in the stories. I see it every day. I, I chuckle at a lot of them. There was actually one today. I can't remember exactly offhand, but I know I was like, nice. <laughs> it was pretty good. So. Dancing today with the Check dancing. Today I put all the dancing ones. <laughs> yeah, it, there, it there, there was one in particular. I can't remember, though, offhand which one it was, which oh, wow. sucks, but well, uh, go follow. Go follow Trapper of Colorado on Instagram. You'll see them coming up. It, it's worth it. Just go do it. Um, Thank you. Instagram. Thank you. Just do it. Just do it. Instagram's great for that. Go do it. Yeah, I mean, God, people, the people who are listening. Go ahead. 
I was just going to say every Friday I try to do, I do a vintage photo. There've been a few Fridays I've missed cause I was like moving or something and there was just no time. But I, um, I try to do a vintage photo every Friday and I try to do ski stuff. Like it's winter sports or ski all from October until, you know, May and with a few other things. And then I have other stuff like water skiing or um, mountain climbing or whatever I find in the summer. But um, if you're into vintage ski photos, I try to do every Friday one of those on Instagram. Which is great. That's awesome. I, I love history. There's there's a, several uh, ski museums and other historical, uh, well, people who focus on historical um, events and, and, and locations like, well, for instance, I talk, you know, at one point was talking a lot about lost ski areas and I have some more stuff coming out about a specific lost ski area that I've been sitting on since Halloween. My creativity mm. just isn't always there. I'm not the most creative guy in the world. I know that. Oh. So that'll be coming out. But the history is great, too. So I, I love that. Um and speaking of which, not the history part, but you, you talked about a Colorado senator. You talk about living in Colorado. You talk about being from Colorado. You're definitely not a poser. I've never been to Colorado. What's it like skiing there? Like you've skied the east and the west. And we've talked about yeah. this with other folks as well. The difference between skiing mid-Atlantic and northeast versus the Rockies in the Midwest. What's it like for you? Okay, so the first thing that you notice, and it is crazy. The first thing you notice is that the height of the mountains and the length of the ski runs is just blows sure. you away compared to the East. And the, I mean, there were times, especially, I mean, there still are times when I'm just like when the season's early and, um, and for me, it's still early because I do a lot more spring skiing than like, I'm not, I don't love the cold, but it's, um, so I'm barely getting started now, but it's, like I'm like, oh my God, this run is exhausting because you just it just goes on and on and on and you're like, whoa, I have to stop. But also you just have to stop and take in the views and really just go, I am in one of the most beautiful places in the world. I can't even imagine like taking this for granted and I never want to take it for granted. And I still love sure. even driving I seventy and being in traffic and like you come around a corner and you just have this spectacular view or you go over a hill and you have a spectacular view. And I think that it's just not to be taken for granted, you know? And then nice. there's also, yeah, it's, it's super cool. And then there's like the whole, like, like, I feel like it's like a secret side of the sport here, which is there are all these ski huts and warming shacks and smoke shacks and they're scattered on the mountains and, some, I don't know, you know, what's where exactly, but I, I can say a few things. Like, I know that I found a couple of them at Winter Park. I think Winter Park has, I want to say it's like 17 huts. I haven't been able to find more than two. And one of them I just found like last May, April or May. Sure. It's too close to the season. I just, and it was actually once I found it, I'm like, this is so easy to find. Like, how come I never found this before? But, and one of, nice. one of them is, I found a couple of years ago, but there's more. And then like, I've talked to the lifties and I'm like, so do you know where? And like, like people really guard the secrets. They just really, really do. And, um, oh, yeah. and somebody just told me there's one by like panoramic lift pole 10 and I've been all over and I can't find it. And I'm like, I, I don't know where it is. So, um, but there's these little warming huts and, and then there's bigger warming huts and Breckenridge has some that are like infamous that have been, actually blown up by ski patrol because they were so big it was like a house and like way sure. on the backside. I, I haven't ever seen it but um but this one that they took they take them down because they don't want people getting hurt you know they don't want people yeah. getting hurt and they're remote and they already have enough people on the mountain that the ski patrol has to take care of every day you know getting people down off the mountain who are like in over their heads and they don't need people way in the back parts of the trees hidden away who need to be like airlifted out so they're like you know what it's beautiful it's a cool thing but like it's got to go and as a friend of some ski patrollers i totally get it on the other hand yeah. it's like what makes these places so special is these little secret things and then i've seen them at um snow mass and have I seen Aspen Highlands? I've seen Aspen Highlands. I can't remember if I've seen a snowmass. So I know snowmass has the Hunter Thompson shrine, but there are these shrines all over those mountains. And I think Aspen 
has some as well. I'm sure they do, as a matter of fact. But um, but I know that Aspen Highlands has quite a few, and I've like stumbled upon some and no mask. And again, they don't let them all stay, but some True. are still there. I think Hunter Thompson's is probably always going to be there because it's Hunter Thompson. Like that's like it would be like sacrilege. But I've seen pictures, and there you can just Google the stuff and see, you know, information about like the shrines and. Sure. That's the kind of thing I think that makes it really, just makes it really unique and tied to the history and a sense of like, skiing is sure it's a sport and it's an industry and it's a big money industry. But at the end of the day, it's about being with your buddies and having a good time. And like the shrines are for remembering the people people have skied with and the, the little huts and the smoke shacks are for like taking a little time with your friends and you all like pile into you crawl through a little hole and you're in this little kind of cave that nobody else knows about or most people don't even see and you're in there you know whatever eating your lunch or smoking or whatever and it's like that's what makes it special it's a it's a it's a like it's a culture that's about friendship and shared it absolutely is it is. Uh, skiing is a social sport, man, and snowboarding too, and all most snow sports. And you know, we know it. Over the last the pandemic season, last season, you had to ride a chair by yourself if you didn't come with friends. You know, and part of the experience sometimes is riding a lift with new people. We all do it. Um, some people hate it. I I get a kick out of it. I get a kick uh, just. This season myself, I was riding a chair with a dude and his uh, eh, teenage daughter, I guess. She didn't want anything to do with talking to new people, but he did. So we <laughs> talked around her. We didn't care. Um, she had to That's deal with it. It wasn't a long thing. time. I love See? like being alone and talking to people on the list. And I always talk to people on the list. Unless, like, you know, unless you're on a list and you can just tell like that person's got their headphones on. They just don't want to talk and whatever. But mostly sure. it's like you just have the most interesting conversation. It's kind of like an elevator. You know, it's like. You have this much yep. time. <laughs> You're gonna. Have, and it's always, I always start with like, "Hey, where are you up here from?" You know, and then um, you just a lot of people are from Denver, but you know, you you get people who are like, "Hey, I just flew in from like if it's spring break, it could be Florida, <laughs> you know, sure. or or Mississippi or Alabama or Texas, whatever." But a lot of people from the East Coast, a lot of people in the East Coast, and it's fun. That's like that's the best thing. It's a social sport all the way. It is. And you're not wrong about the the, 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 the different uh, like warming huts, the different secrets. Like we've talked about that on the program, me and other people here um, about the secrets that locals know, like things you may or may not find. Uh, we've talked about um, mountains that I've been to where I at one time know where the secret trail is that the lifties would all hit to get high and stuff like this. And, you know, uh -huh. nothing I, not, I would go down and I, I I've told people sometimes you know, it, don't let anybody know you told an outsider because they'll kill you. It's it's, right. it's a capital offense. But <laughs> I've said it openly. Look at a look. Go to Google. Go to your mountain that you think you might know something. Look at the satellite map and then look at the trail map. And you're going to notice another trail kind of cut out there that's not on the trail map. And unless that trail has history, that's the secret one. Um, but then you can see <laughs> Area 51, too. Oh, yeah. Google. You can figure out so much stuff from Google's uh, satellite maps. It's ridiculous. And yes, you can see Area 51, too. So what I'm saying isn't that big of a deal. <laughs> you know, you can see the secret air base out there in Nevada. It is really there. Right. And yes, you can see it. Um, wow. So, yeah, man, you you have such a different experience like it skiing. Generally speaking from a, in a general from a general outlook or whatever. I don't like generalized anything, but in this place it applies because if you ski here in the northeast you ski in the rockies you ski in the west you ski in the midwest mid-atlantic whatever it is or then you go to canada or down to south america or oceania or europe or asia we're all generally the same but little differences and that does go regionally by country as well skiing here in new england versus skiing there in colorado it's it's a little different you know and because i don't think we really have that similar again i don't think culture is the right word but it, it, it's close right Right. You know, I, I I think that so it, it, it's very interesting to me to get to talk to people from other places like on this program. We've talked to people from the UK. We talked to people from California. We now are talking to you from Colorado. I don't remember if there was another Colorado. Um, well, there was, but that was that was something else. Um, so 
you've told us about what we can see. You got any other tips, tricks, anything for those of us who have yeah. never been? Oh, for sure. I mean, go for it. First of all, I mean, I think the resorts here, they can be so intimidating, especially if you're not used to the long runs. But I would really say sure. that like um, Copper, Winter Park, Steamboat, Beaver Creek, Eldora are great mountains to start on. Um, Breckenridge, too. They all have areas that are like they have so much variety in the runs. They're good for skiers of all levels. They're really family friendly and I mean, I've always felt like copper was my first mountain that I skied in Colorado. And nice. I just, I feel like it's so easy to get your ski legs, if you will. And one of the things that I always um, tell people, well, this is what I did. Like I found runs and I still do it if I'm in a, a place I haven't skied before. I find a run that I really enjoy, you know, it could be, well, back in the day it was a green and now it's, you know, some, maybe some blue that sure. I just do it over and over until I feel really confident on it. And that could be like six times. It could be 10 times. It could be whatever, you know, and when you start to feel bored on that run, you know that you're ready to try something different. And the thing sure. I think that's the most intimidating is like when you're skiing and like, you don't know what to expect. Like, you don't know if you're going to go down a run and it's going to be really bumpy. You don't know. Like, and, and also I have to fault some of the resorts because they'll put something as a blue, but it's like, Oh yeah, but that's a blue, but it's all moguls. And if people don't do moguls, that's a black to them. You know, that is not sure. a blue if you're not used to moguls. And it's like, come on guys. Like, can't you just tell me if this is going to be bumpy? I'm not that into moguls. Having said that, I do tree ski, but I won't do it unless, Okay. there's deep snow because you need some powder. Otherwise you're like a slot car on an ice run. You know, you're just like flying through and it's scary because you don't want to hit a tree. Right. So it's True. like, all right, you know, you got to get your, um, your ski legs, as I say, <laughs> like where um, yeah. you just get your confidence built. And so it's like, do a run a bunch of times. You'll feel so confident. Then you can go to the next thing and you'll be like, okay, now I know how to handle what I might encounter. And then, and it's funny because it's like the first ones I used to do at Copper, I remember like I was so afraid of some of the simplest things and now they're just like, psh, like you're over it. Like you're gone. Like it's nothing. Yeah. And, and every season I try to find, especially like later into the season, I'll find things that I'm like, okay, I'm trying this new thing and I might just do it a few times, but I don't really, I haven't really mastered it. And I'll like yeah. make a point of saying, okay, so next season, that's the one I'm going to master. You know, I mean, that's assuming you have the um, ability to return to the same mountain the next season, but it's like, all right, like right now, my area that I have to conquer is uh, Tucker at Copper because they only opened that three, I think it's called Three Bears Ski Lift two winters ago. And that is like, a, okay. like I look up there and I'm like, I'm too scared to do that, but I know that I can do it. You know, so it's like, you just have to make yourself get over the fear. And so much of it is in your head too, but it's like, you don't want to go onto an area where you don't have the skill set for. So just like get comfortable by doing something that feels good, do it over and over. And then you feel like you can move to the next thing. And, and, and I mean, you know, another thing too, is like people feel like, well, they can't come to Colorado because so expensive. Well, here's another tip. Like, I don't know every year who's going to be doing what, but in the past, Winter Park and Copper and I think A Basin have all done um, four packs. So you can buy a four pack in like May for the following season. So you don't have to buy like a whole Icon Pass or Copper Pass for the season. You just buy a four pack. It's a good deal. And in the past, they have given five days for the price of four. And I don't know if Copper's eliminating that because I think Altera really wanted to phase it out. But I think Winter Park still is doing it. And it's like you're getting five for four. You buy it early and know that you're going to come out and you're getting a great deal on like really a world-class mountain. Sure. Absolutely. That's not a bad deal. Anytime you can get a, anything <laughs> four for five or five for four, or anytime you can get a little something extra, get it um and there's ways like margaret said there's a ton of different ways even in colorado yes colorado can be expensive yes getting there can be expensive but there's ways around it you just got to know these these little tricks talk to the people that's the beautiful part about the social part of skiing talk to the people who are there you'll learn something i think right 
Right. right. And, and, you know, and people at the resorts are so, like, people who work the resorts, especially, sure. like, lift operators and stuff. I mean, you don't have a lot of time to talk to a lift operator because you got to go on lift. But if, if you got, like, if you got a question for them and you have a time to just squeeze it in before, like, you know, as you're jumping on lift, they will answer it. And they will tell you, like, X, Y, or Z, whatever. You know, they, they're yeah. always really happy to help. And, I mean, especially at bigger resorts, there are all these people cruising around, especially around the base, that have a big letter I on the back of their jacket. Like, I think Winter Park's are jacket, or maybe it's copper, I forget, but they have, like, a lime green jacket on. And I know Breckenridge has them. And these are people who are just there to help you. You know, they will sure. even, at Steamboat, I was, like, looking at maps, and they ski up to you and go, like, need help? Need help? You know, they're, like, they want That's awesome. You. You know? So that's so awesome, like, man. Yeah. It's like, it doesn't, it doesn't have to feel intimidating. Even if you come out all by yourself, like you're going to, you're going to master it and you're going to have friends along the way. You know, it's, it's Absolutely. so, it's so, easy. so those are my, those are my main Colorado tips for sure. <laughs> you know, I like it. I like it. And anybody go out, anybody, you know, one of the things I can say is Colorado is the home of in, in at least one case, but there's met your mega passes go a long way there too. Yeah. Indy, um, which everybody knows I support Indy shout out, Doug fish, love, love Indy pass. Um, but Epic icon mountain collective, all of them that if you're there, right. man, you can, you can get on those mountains. There there's ways. Um, also, and, um, good. Yeah. And you know, I mean, uh, a friend of mine actually is coming out from New York City in um, a couple of weeks to ski Steamboat and Copper. Is um, he had he didn't even know that he could do it, and he got an Icon Pass. He's a snowboarder, but he was and shout out to Ian. Anyway, he um, he got it like a military <laughs> pass. Even though it's kind of crazy, but he's something to do with his job which is maritime actually he was able to get okay. a military pass even though he's not officially like he's not a soldier and and there are ways that you can get these discount passes and that was i think that you get an icon a military pass with the icon i think it's in the 400s it's not like it is yeah. for like the rest of us so that is not bad that's not bad especially off um early sale the early season sales that's 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 not bad that's dirt cheap um and lord yeah. knows we're now at the point where you know a 400 hundred dollar mega pass you ski three days you've paid for it like that's where we're at um so right. Right. it's it's almost worth it to buy it mid-season that's great too colorado sounds great i want to come out there uh, eventually one of these days i will it takes some planning ski rex media fans know that i don't do well in the higher ups that's why i sit here in new england my little safe two three thousand four thousand foot you know hills <laughs> i stay here but i do love oh. as i told people i tell but, people know, i love I, las vegas man so i know you know there's one thing i was going to tell you just because i know you talked about um you know feeling the altitude Something that I learned, to, what I did, right, as I was, like, preparing to move to Colorado from New York City, was I sure. got, and I, I brought them at a health food store, is, is it chlorophyll. So you can get chlorophyll in a liquid form. And chlorophyll is, like, you know, what's in plants. So, and you take, and yeah. it's, like, a dark, dark color. It's, like, a almost a purplish, as I recall. And you take a tablespoon of it every day and it's supposed to help you acclimatize. So if you were to do that, like knowing like, okay, I'm going to be skiing at altitude in February and you start taking that for, I don't know how many weeks in advance, like you'd have to kind of research it, but you just start drinking a tablespoon of chlorophyll a day. It might help getting, huh. you know, and when you come to the mountain towns, they always have these little, like pow like all the stores that you see these like powder mixes that are you add to water and they help you acclimatize. But I don't know that they'll really do much if they're just there for a couple of days. So that's sure. why I think if you can get stuff in advance and just start preparing your body, hmm. I think it'll help you. That's interesting to me. I had never heard the chlorophyll before. I've heard of other plants that can help. Um, one is one of the ones I heard is if you go to South America where there's coca plants all over the place, I say that's not for me. Okay. Um, they say if you mix it with the tea and it's not the same as doing straight cocaine. I was like, it's yeah, not, well. 
It's not. I don't know nothing. Really I stay not. away from that stuff. I was in stuff. Argentina, and I saw what you're talking about. I was up in, in sure. Argentina, and um, and I did definitely see these coca. It's like they sell it everywhere, and it's just sure. it's a leaf. It's really, it's nothing yeah. like. So don't worry. It's not. <laughs> you won't get hot. You won't get hot. But it's, I, I think it does help, actually. But I don't know. I didn't do it. It's, it's like I tell people, I my body only likes that I put air and water and a little bit of food in it, nothing else. No, no, nothing. <laughs> Clean living. It's not necessarily my choice. It's the rest of my body that's chosen it. That's awesome. Right, though. Right. Chlorophyll, I'll try that stuff. Why not? What's the worst that could happen? I turn green. Don't care about that. I'm fine with that. Right. It's good. Um, it's like you, you, you don't, it's like eating salad a lot more salad than you would normally eat, probably. So. That's fine, though. <laughs> that's cool. I'm all about that. And then the, uh, the O2 bars. That if you've ever been to a party city like Las Vegas and then obviously oh, yeah. in the higher ups, the, they've got these things everywhere. They're actually kind of neat. I've been in them. I've never tried it, but I've checked them out and it, it's kind of cool. You know, maybe it's just a fat or a trend. I don't know. I dug it. I was like, cool. I'm with it, man. But then I'm I'm easy to get along with. I don't care. <laughs> right. Let's well, see. Like, the oxygen bars. I mean, there's some... Um, I know a person up in Frisco where I was living last year up in Summit County who sure. owns the oxygen bar at Copper, but I think he might have closed it. So they're around. They're not a ton of them. It's like, mm, I guess they're like in the the more expensive resorts. Like, I bet there's an oxygen bar in Park City, that kind of oh, thing, you know. Yeah. But I don't think I ever saw one in Steamboat. And, um, I was just in Steamboat a couple of days ago, and I don't nice. think I saw anything up there now. Yeah, I sold a bunch of stuff to a store, my favorite store in Steamboat. And actually, um, it's so funny. I was like, it means so much to me because when I first started skiing in Colorado, one of my first mountain was um, Cabra, and then Winter Park, and then I went to Steamboat. And um, sure. my friend and I were doing this like epic trip, and we we went up. It was right before Christmas, and we went to. Steamboat, and then we went from there out to Park City. Blah, blah. Anyway, but um, but <laughs> we were my first time in Steamboat, and I'm walking down the street with him, and I saw this store, and I was like, "That store is beautiful. That's nice. where I want my product to be one day." And it was the awesome. first store that I approached, and they took my products, and then I just went up and gave them more. So uh, nice. it's called Into the West. And they're really more of a design store, but they have a small okay. area for clothing and accessories. And it's just a very, very Western and very Steamboat Springs experience. But Steamboat is not a, like, dolled up resort town like some are. It's really very, It's there's a lot of ranches in that area of Colorado. Yes. And it's got, like, a cowboy feel all the way to its core. And it will never let that go. And they even have, like, big cowboy parades and things on the industry. Awesome. <laughs> Part of I've heard thing. that about, I've heard that about steamboat, man. It's, it's, it's got that cowboy feel to it. You, you see the ranches, you see the horses, you see the ski joring mm -hmm. out there. That's awesome. Um, I definitely want to check that out one of these days. Um, the whole thing yeah, I've, sure. I've heard, I've heard so much good thing. I actually have a friend from back in the long ago. I think she had a grandfather or a family member in any case, who lived out there so she was out there every so often this was back in the american skiing company days kids so uh -huh. that's dated that's 90s dated so um when we all worked for the same company snowboat steamboat and us and, uh, uh -oh. um, think, yeah back in the 90s my friends that's right tim's not a young guy anymore he just isn't but <laughs> he's not old either don't you forget it i don't know i'm stupid whatever exactly. um but that it does sound great. That place does sound awesome. Uh, Colorado sounds good. You make it sound great anyway. Um, and it's also also always awesome to talk to people from different places. Like I said, we've talked to people on this program from the UK, talked to people from all over the United States. We're lining up some more Europeans. It's it's going to be a wild time here as we uh, finish out the uh, general ski season here since it's almost February. The season's almost the season's halfway done here in the East, but. In Colorado, there's still plenty of time to go. You still got months. So months. Of time. You know, I love that you're um, embracing skiers of all um, from all over the world for your program. And it's one of the things that I, I mean, this sounds a little braggadocious, but I will say that I've enjoyed <laughs> being on chairlifts with people from Europe. And I found them more at 
Brackenridge, I think. And one yeah. of the things is, I, I mean, I'm just saying, they have told me that it's better to ski Colorado than it is to ski the Alps. And they said, because the weather's more consistent, you have more sunshiny mm. days, the snow comes and it's like, it's like manageable. Like you can ski in the snow. Like there, are, I've skied in some whiteout conditions and I've skied in some sure. p- pretty high winds, but it's like, yeah. and they do ch- close chairlifts, but that is not the norm. You know, it's just not the norm. Mm. And it's like, it's that incredible powder snow. If you're in steamboat, it's officially champagne powder. And, um, mm. you know, I don't, I mean, it's all the same powder snow all over the state, but Steamboat has like a trademark on it or something. But it's like, the, it's just an easy, easy area to ski. And, and Utah as well. It's like the Rockies are just so easy to ski in. Um, so, I mean, yeah. I'll be curious what two Europeans that you interview would have to say if they could compare skiing Western United States with their own home mountains. But, you know, shout yeah. out to the friends in Switzerland, especially that, yes. I would like to go there and ski too. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. These snow sports are for everybody, man. I tell that, you know, people, you know, ask, you know, Americans, Europeans, Canadians. I was like, dude, it's all the same to me. I've known people from all around the world. I've skied with people from all around the world here in the U S obviously I'm not well traveled outside of the borders. Um, once I can get across the Canadian border Treblant, I'm coming for you. Cause you got a casino and skiing in a casino. I, you can't beat that. And yes, I know I could go to Reno and Tahoe's right there, but um, Quebec's right here. So I totally you know. want to go to Chamblon. It's on my icon pass, and I really wanted to go yep. there because it looks like it's really kind of fun. And I mean, well, Quebec is a really great area. Too. I've been I've been to Montreal, and it's like it's just a really fun fun part of Canada for sure. So I would totally go. Yeah, <laughs> to I would. I would be all over that. I would be all over that. <laughs> I mean, the, I, I can't get across that border right now. You got to have the passport and the sh- you have to be uh, right. vaccinated and all this other stuff that I just, I, I'm not saying I'm lazy, <laughs> but I am saying I'm procrastinating a lot, a lot of things. So well, we'll get there. You're busy. We'll get there. You're busy. Yes, exactly. <laughs> we'll get there. It's fine. Exactly. It's right there for me. It's three hours away. I'm fine. I can Is get it really? there. It's not a word. Uh, maybe closer to foot? four. Yeah. We don't have a lot of state out here. <laughs> that's true that's true <laughs> we're, we're we're very small I, that's one of the wonderful things about road tripping around the united states because you realize in a six hours here you can get f- through six seven states out there you might get across one maybe two and if you're in texas you're just not getting out of it not in six hours you're not but i don't think so <laughs> Yeah, but I like to drive, so that's cool. That's awesome. This sounds great. I love it. Trapper of Colorado, great stuff. Check out their website. Anything else you want to do before we get out of here? Well, I'll just mention again, like your listeners get a discount. So ten percent off anything on the website um through April twenty twenty two. And the um the code that you're gonna use at checkout is ski rex ten, and that's all capitals, S K I R E X, the number ten. They get 10%, and I do free shipping in the U.S. as well, though I have to say that may not last forever because shipping prices are just skyrocketing. But at the moment, it's still free shipping. So, um, And I hope to hold that as long as I can. And, um, you know, check us out on Instagram, Facebook. I'm not huge on Facebook because I haven't really – and you know, there's only so many hours in a day. So I throw myself at Instagram more. But um but I also try to respond if people reach out and if you ever have any questions, just say, Hey Margaret, send me a message and I'll answer you. And there you go, kids. That is awesome. Uh check her out. Check out Trapper of Colorado on Instagram, as she said. Very awesome. Like I said, I follow, I watch the story every day. We got we've got some good memeage <laughs> going on over there. So that's a lot of fun. Like I said, the gear is pretty solid. I love this scarf. You're gonna see that popping up as I get back out on the mountain in the coming weeks. Yeah. Uh yeah, it's gonna be kind of awesome. So we'll see that. We'll be all be tagging each other back and forth. It'll be a lot of fun. Margaret's out there hitting mountains in Colorado. Um so shout out to Colorado and everybody out there. Have a good time. I know their parts of Colorado season started late too, but winter's coming. <laughs> Real oh, winter yeah, is snowing. coming. I can feel it. Snowing Very right good. now. Yay. <laughs> it's snowing right now as we're talking. That is awesome. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Margaret. This was a lot of fun. I hope you had a good time as well. 
Yes. Thank you so much, Tim. I really appreciate it. No problem. No problem. A lot of fun. We'll get you back on as soon as we can. And uh, we'll take runs if you're in the East or if I'm in the West or if we both happen to be ended up at Treblant. I'm down. Oh, yeah. You I'm not it. great, you but I can it. keep up. Nice. Very <laughs> good. We'll probably at the same. Yeah, I think I'll be trying to keep up <laughs> with you on a switch. So, I mean, thanks. you never know. I might be having a good day. All right, everybody. <laughs> Trapper of Colorado, trapperofcolorado.com. S-K-I-R-E-X-1-0, all capitals, 10% off. Free shipping for a while, but that might not be there. So get there as soon as you can because we know the USPS, UPS, FedEx, it's all going. Everything's going up. Check it out ASAP. All links in the description. That's both video and audio versions, which you can see and hear anywhere thank you everybody for listening we'll see you on the next one thank you miss margaret thank you tim take care thank you and there you have it everybody margaret very nice woman a lot of fun to talk to we actually talked for a while we actually were talking for like an hour before we even started the actual episode so very friendly very nice woman very awesome be really fun to get to take a, a few runs with her like we said in during the energy interview we both happen to be up there in Treblant. great if i happen to be out in colorado great we're gonna we're gonna meet up sometime she's a lot of fun um but beyond that trapper of colorado.com video version people see it scrolling on the bottom of the screen everybody else the audio version folks and video version folks look in the um description and you will see trapper of colorado.com head there and as we brought up during the episode ski rex media listeners get 10 percent off at checkout use the code s-k-i-r-e-x-1-0 ski rex 10 all capitals and you will get 10 percent off and that's through april 30th April 30th. So we have a while. There's almost two, almost three months. Goodness, it'll be all of February, all of March, and all of April. Three months, and you can get 10% off at Trapper of Colorado. Go get yourself some threads so you would be looking good in the opera scene. And like I said, you saw me demonstrating or heard me demonstrating the uh uh um the scarf that I have from Trapper of Colorado, and I had to take it off because it really it got warm in here. That's how nice it is. And it's very nice. It's very soft. It's very well made. It's very cool. So trapperofcolorado.com, S-K-I-R-E-X-1-0, Ski Rex 10, all capitals. Um, also, that information will be in the description as well. And you can get yourself 10% off at Margaret's website, her web store. And there you go. Right? Right. Thank you for joining me again. Thank you to Margaret for being on the program. That was a lot of fun. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. Um, I hope you, if you want, you'll enjoy it again. And, but if you did enjoy it, like I said, please tell your friends, tell your friends, uh, <laughs> share it, like it, leave reviews. You can do that. Not only you can rate and review not only on Apple Podcasts now, but you can do it on Spotify now. I'm I know that for sure, and there might be others, and you can do that um, as well. Don't forget to check out Ski Rex Media's Patreon link in the description. And if once you're done, it's Trapper of Colorado. If you want some Ski Rex Media merch, including the sticker request, stickers are still free, but you can request them through the store, Ski Rex Media Merch Shop dot com, and you can pick up some. Uh, uh, Ski Rex Media branded merch, the main logo, and a couple other nifty little things I've put together. Um, also, if you want, on February 22nd, Washington's birthday and my birthday, the Washington birthday, Tim's birthday sale. Um, that day, if you pick up something on that day, 25% off. Why not at the Ski Rex Media merch shop? How about that? Does that sound good? Yeah, we'll do that um, uh, uh, for the whole shop. How's that sound? I mean, gift cards won't be a thing, won't be part of that, but gear will, um, merch will. So check that out. The one day only Ski Rex Media, George Was or Tim from Ski Rex Media, George Washington birthday sale, 25% off in the merch shop. Grab yourself something there too, right? Right. Thank you again for joining me, everyone. Please join me next week for another. It might be an interview. I was about to say another interview for sure, but I don't know yet um, because I'm still rescheduling interviews from when I was six. See, told you I'm not going to let you forget that I had the COVID. So it might be me. It might be an interview. Not sure yet. We'll see. Thank you for joining me anyway, and I'm sure you'll join me for that one. Thank you for enjoying it, and I'll see you out there as I start traveling around again and skiing again through February. I'll see you out there in March. And April, maybe, and May, in June, when Big Snow should be back open from the fire. Shout out to them. Thank you, everybody, for listening or watching. Hashtag watching. Watching it, and I'll see you on the next one. Later.